be great. There you go. Okay. So again, I'll just repeat, this is a meeting of the New Canyon Parking Commission. It's uh, now 7.30 exactly. We're beginning, we have a quorum with uh, myself, Laura Bad, and Jennifer Donovan. And I will share my screen briefly. <sighs> Where is the agenda that I had up here? There it is, okay. And the first thing we have to cover is the appeals. And I'm looking down the list of appeals. I'm just gonna read these quickly. If there's uh, John Barker, Ray Chung, Ellen Daugherty, Lisa Gandow, Natalie Lightman, Madison McGinnis, Fabrizio Orbrigon, Lu Lucia. You know, I think I saw her. Lucia, mm -hmm. Lucia, are you on? I'm here. Okay, that's great. And I saw Carolyn Whelan is on. And so far, no one else. All right, Lucia, let's begin with you. Just give us a second and we will pull up the documentation on yours. Sure. I want to commend you, Keith, on all those names. There was some tough pronunciation there. <laughs> well, you know. All right, so let's find this. Just give us a second. Okay. Here. And I'll even, if I can, share my screen with this. Is that it? Yes. Okay, there is your appeal. I didn't find a photo. Did I miss that, Stacy? No, it's for an unpaid space, so there's no photo. Okay. So, um, Lucia, would you... Uh, I'm going to stop sharing, but that's just, I was hoping there'd be a photo. There's no photo. So mm -hmm. stop sharing. Lucia, want to tell us what happened? Uh, so um, basically, sorry about that. My um, son took our car because his car was at the, um, at the shop because we were having it get uh, worked on before he went back to college. And he was rushing as normal to go to his dentist appointment that we were trying to fit in before he went back to college. And I think in all the, he knew he was late, he was running and it wasn't his car, it was our car. So I'm sure he has change or money somewhere in his car, but you know, he had our car and he was so concerned about getting to the dentist on time that he just parked and ran in. So that's really what happened. We've never gotten a ticket before. We always pay for our parking. So, um, and again, it wasn't myself or, or my husband or, you know, it was him. He's at school right now. So I'm just sort of pleading on his behalf, but it is our car. So that's the long and the short of it. Okay. Um, and I'll mention that Peter Ogilvie just arrived. Evening. Welcome, Peter. Um, so, so tell me again, where were, where were you, where was the car parked, Lucia? So I, you know what, normally he would park right on Park Street in front of the dentist office, but he probably just by habit just said, I'm going to pull into, you know, he didn't look to see, or maybe at that time, because it was probably his, his appointment was, uh, it was like two o'clock or so and he was running late. So I can't, I don't know what time it was. It was probably maybe 10 past two or something like that. And he just pulled into the lot right next to that Park Street building um and ran in okay so he went he, that's well, i don't know what the body took him. lot yep okay i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay and he didn't as i recall from this one he didn't pay for the parking at all he just right. went in right he but i think he was so on target to just get to the appointment on time that he didn't really even think about it and then 
you know, he, he wouldn't have had money in, well, I don't have money in my car. He would have had no money in his car, but he didn't have his car with him. So. Okay. Um, all right. I guess, I guess that really covers everything. I have no <laughs> questions. How about you, uh, Peter or Jennifer or Laura? No. No, I would just point out in the future where there is a, uh, parking pay app now obviously you know maybe he hadn't been here since we put that in this spring mm. and there's also credit card you can pay by credit card so there are other options yeah he hadn't been there since probably the winter i suppose that was his last appointment so yeah yeah that would have made it easy because these kids live and die by their phones so that wouldn't exactly. have been a problem at all all right thank you mm -hmm. okay um if there are no questions then so go ahead, Peter. <clears throat> so the defense here is that he didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. Well, he, I That's think why... a, a, he didn't have money, but B, I think most importantly is he overlooked it because he was just running, running to make his appointment on time. All right, Lucia, I mean, you recognize that. That's not really any kind of defense at all. I know, but he didn't have money. So he, I mean, that's the other part of it, but. Well, he didn't have so, a credit card or access to a credit card? He doesn't have a credit card, no. So the defense is one, he was distracted and running late and two, he was distracted and didn't have any money. Correct. D did he plan on parking or was this something unexpected? Oh, I mean, he knew he had to park. I, 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 in the, in the past, it's usually a situation where he can park right out front. So I think right. because he, that's really what happened. So he, because he didn't park right in front of the building, he had no option but to go in and find the, the quick, the the quickest open space, I suppose, or the. Yeah, okay. I understand. Okay, thank you again, uh, Lucia. Our uh, our format is that we go through all the appeals and then we do other matters, then we circle back and we decide the appeals. You're welcome to stay for the entire meeting. It's a public meeting, or you can you can leave now and, and we'll let you know how it turns out. There's, uh, you know, we, we try and make it easier for you. I understand. I, like I said, it's uh, we've never gotten a parking ticket ever. So it was sort of befuddling when he came on and said, oh my gosh, I got a ticket, mom. Well, what happened? Didn't you pay? I was running late, you know, that whole thing. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I also want to say welcome to Drew. Um, somehow you look a little, Hello. you look a little piratical since the last time I saw you. I don't know if uh, we actually saw each other. I may have had my, uh, my uh, avatar picture up the last time, but I wasn't at the last meeting, I was at the previous one. So it's, it's been a while. Anyway, welcome. Thank you, everybody. Okay. All right, so let's circle back. Um, I see we have Carolyn Whelan here, who I know is at a, in a PL. Let's see who else is here. I think that's all. So uh, Ms. Whelan, you want to tell us about your ticket and I'll, uh, well, just give us a second and see if we can pull it up, which won't take me long, I hope. And then maybe I'll, there. Okay. I think that's your appeal. And did we have photos with this one? No, Either? that's also another unpaid space. So there's no photos for that. Okay. So uh, let's just look at this for a second. This is the Main Street lot, which is Morse Court, I presume, number 39. Oh, yes. Now I remember this one. Okay. So I'll stop share. So, Ms. Whelan, uh, tell us what happened. Sure. So as my appeal letter stated, I parked in the main street lot and attempted to pay at the meter on Morse court. Um, it seemed simple enough of a process to pay. 
So I went for it and it said, press start to begin. I press start. And each time I tried it, just the screen just flashed action forbidden. I inserted my card probably five or six times pressing start. And I saw a couple other people around me who seemed like they were facing the same situation that had been trying to pay and just didn't. Um, and I was also late for a meeting, so I just kind of gave up. And I would also like to note that the next time I parked there was on August 16th, and I did successfully pay for the spot that time. I have my transaction history if you'd like to see it, but just want to emphasize that a significant effort was made to pay and the machine wasn't cooperating. And okay. that's pretty much my case. Okay, so the way that machine works is you put in the space number and then you decide how much you want and uh, and then you pay for it with the credit card. Um, right. And that's when you, you know, hit the kind of print button or accept button and your transaction right. closes. Yeah, it wasn't even letting me get to the space number or the amount. It just said action forbidden every time I tried to even press start. Yeah, and Stacy, what do you say to that? I, you had a note here on the uh, ticket. Well, the only thing that I can tell you is I double check with the officer who usually fixes and maintains the machine. Um, that has never ever been a um, word that came up. Action for, uh, forbidden, and I went to check the manual as well, and I've never seen that message anywhere in the manual. Um, I did go back on the transaction history for that date. And as the little note said, it, there was 137 transactions from both machines starting at 824 and ending at 654. We had okay. no calls that day that said the machine was not working. And there are two machines in that lot. Um, so I can only give you what I found out. Um, I had no complaints that those machines were not working by anybody else. And I will tell you that if the machines are not working, we will get notified. Okay. I mean, it just didn't work for me, but I understand that there wasn't any notification on your end. Ms. Whelan, I have a question. You, you mentioned that others uh, also trying to park in that lot were having difficulty. Was it at the other machine? Is it the second machine or the same machine? That was more speculation on my part. People just seemed to be kind of standing around looking confused. So I didn't clarify directly with anyone if they were having the issue. That was just a conclusion I draw without actually figuring it out. So and that's not really an important. Have you parked in Morse Court before? No, that was my first time. Have you lived in New Canaan? Do you live in New Canaan? And have you parked there in New Canaan before? No, I live in Ridgefield. And this is your first time in New Canaan? It wasn't my first time in New Canaan because my mother grew up there and my grandmother still lives there, but it was my first time parking in that court myself. Okay. Uh, this is Drew again with a question for Stacy. If there is a uh, malfunction that uh, user experiences. Is there like a call number that's posted visibly on every machine? I mean, is there somebody to call and say this is not working? So there's a phone record or a call record? Not on the machine, but our number is easy to get. If you were to put that into Google, you can get the parking number. Uh, and I know, no, there is no number on the machine. We do look at the back office to see if there's any malfunctions or alerts. And again, there was none on those machines as well. I have access to a back office computer system and I checked that as well. Um, so there was nothing on my end that I could find. And again, that message has never yeah. been said, action forbidden. Okay. A any other questions? All right, Ms. Whalen, thank you. Um, again, you're welcome to stay for the meeting, but otherwise we're going to move along to other things and then circle back to decide on your appeal. It won't, you, you. your staying or going won't affect the result. But again, you're welcome to stay.
All right, so let's get to back to our agenda. Um, and I think we have no one else on who's appealing. And I'm gonna say that again, just in case anyone is on who's appealing, now's your chance to speak up. Okay, not hearing that, but we'll move on to the submission of the July 8th uh, meetings and those uh, meeting minutes look like this. Um, I didn't think there were any comments. I sent them around, um, assuming that no one has any comments. I move that we approve those minutes. All in favor, please signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. I see Jen, aye. Drew, Laura, great. Okay, minutes approved. Excellent. The next thing on our agenda, oh, is uh, the McLeod. Is that how it's uh, pronounced? Uh, there could be uh, only uh, one. Yes, McLeod. McLeod uh, reminds me of the movie Highlander. Yes, exactly. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you for allowing us to speak at your commission, and I truly appreciate everything that you're doing on the Parking Commission. My husband and I are relatively new to the New Canaan community. I teach at St. Luke's. He also works at the Blue Book uh, Construction Company. And one of the things that we wanted to go over today with your permission is an idea that actually we both had when we first moved in. Uh, my husband's mother is, is very elderly. She's had a couple back surgeries. And one of the joys that she has, as well as my, my sons, is being able to go and walk in downtown and do stuff. And we just noticed that there's, it's very limited in parking, especially if you're mobility impaired. And one of the things, reasons why you know, we moved to New Canaan and why I'm a teacher is we like helping our community. And we thought about, well, wouldn't it be great if we could have some way that people who had mobility issues had more than just one or two parking spots. And so that led us to think about, well, what if we had a little, maybe a little side business where we could provide free parking, free valet parking for people who are disabled or who have mobility issues. And then we could also help out some of the small businesses that might only have a couple parking spots in front, you know, like some of the restaurants on Forest. And let's come up with a, a little small business. We're, we're not planning on quitting our jobs for this. This is something that we wanna do to try to help our community. And we see a problem and this is potentially the solution that we see to that problem. And so if you'd like, I can either share my screen or we sent a deck earlier. Sorry about the, yeah, no, no, the deck I revision. Do, do you want me to show it or do you, uh, I'm happy to, to let you Yeah, if it. you don't mind just pulling it up, you know, it starts off, it has a picture of both of us. You can see my glamour shots, what I look like with makeup on, and, <laughs> you know, all that jazz. But uh, really, <laughs> what's really important though, is my husband and I, since moving to New Canaan approximately three years ago, we want to become part of the community and one of the ways that we can give back and that we see would potentially be by offering some valet services. So first and foremost, we're looking to have a company that's friendly, responsible, well insured and will ultimately solve the problems and some challenges that even I'm sure you guys come across in your parking commission where sometimes people with mobility issues have to park either illegally or inconveniently. And so what we're trying to do is by setting up this company, we wanna offer a service that we see a need for in the town. And we're gonna start off with Friday and Saturday evening since that tends to be, I think when most of the people who are either gonna go out in New Canaan or even if we have visitors, when there's a, a, a greater need for the parking. So that being said, we came up with five potential locations for this parking. The first of which, and oh, and thank you, is uh, is, is Tell here me when you Roger want Sherman. They have ballet, and you can you can scroll down for me. That'd be great. Okay. And then this is our vision and mission statement. So we want to make sure that we're providing excellent customer service for New Canaan. My husband and I have both previously been small business owners. We know how important it is for people 
who are visiting our town to get a positive experience, to you know have a friendly welcome, to not be inconvenient sometimes if there are a lot of people trying to park or be in the business. You know, no one wants to turn away business because you can't find a place to park. And there's also nothing, I think, a little bit more tragic than someone who lives in the community that just because they have mobility issues, they don't go out or maybe they have to skip that dinner with their grandkids or whoever because they can't, you know, make sure that they have a, a some somewhere to park. Let me and let me just jump in here real quick, if I may, um, because, you know, I was blessed to have the opportunity to work in this space for seven years, um, uh, you know, while I was going to college. And then after college, when I was starting a new business and I worked for one of the largest valet companies in the country um, and managed an operation for them. And so I'm really benchmarking this business and we are off of, you know, one of the best companies in the country. And, you know, it is a for-profit business. And, you know, what I did initially when we first started was I went out and spoke to Barb um, over at uh, Staying Put in New Canaan. She was one of the first people that I spoke to in the community uh, about the needs and about if there was a need. Um, and, you know, after finding out that it would make a lot of sense, you know, I reached out to other influencers in the community, folks that had served maybe on this committee or on others. Uh, Rob Malazzi was a, a great contact for me who served in the local government. Talked to him about if there was a need and if it might help. He offered his, you know, services if, if I needed them over at his lot at the CVS and the bicycle building. I spoke to Sue Kuda uh, about her lot over at the telephone um, uh, municipal lot about, you know, would that make sense for her? And spoke to local uh, influencers uh, like Steve Carl, asked his opinion about if this made sense. I reached out to Tucker Murphy and Laura uh, Budd and uh, Stacy and ask them their opinion. And so we really put this together based on community buy-in. We also interviewed over a hundred people in, down in, in town, uh, in town center, um, about what they thought, um, if they thought it made sense for the community. And so, you know, although, you know, we are part of the business model is providing, you know, people that have mobility uh, problems or handicapped folks, free valet. Um, so that means that one or two spots turns into a potential 20 spots. Um, but we're also going to be offering the restaurant tours an opportunity to offer greater service. And so it is a for-profit business that does have a mobility uh, solution in there. Um, and, and so, you know, our core values and our mission is to serve um, and to do that through, you know, three potential um, ballet stands in town and you know those locations uh, you know we, we can kind of talk about here shortly if you want to go to the, uh, you know the next slide essentially the parking we understand that the parking situation has changed um, and that it may change some more um, and that there are going to be some changes that come forward um, with the barriers that got, have gone up you can see that picture on the bottom right is no longer really the case. Um, and removing those parking spots has caused some problems. Uh, you know, doing the research, we did find that the people who are needing to move from the park lot behind Elm Street to Elm Street found it un untenable. And so most of those folks that do um, have handicaps um, are now having to stop on Elm Street and drop people off. Um, and so one of the goals is to open up a stand on Elm. Um, we found out during our, our surveys that people love to window shop in town um, on the way in, but they don't necessarily like to window shop on their way out. Uh, so we thought that Spiga uh, might be a, a good initial stop as people are driving in. And so we spoke to Gino Racanelli at Spiga, if it might be a positive thing for him uh, to be involved. Um, you know, speaking to John Barker and to, you know, Luke Venner over at Elm, they were very excited about the opportunity to put a, a ballet there. Said they've wanted it for years, you know, 
Oh, uh, you're slipping away. Your volume's dropping. Adjust that. Can you hear me now? Yeah. And then obviously we we saw forest as a bottleneck, especially after the barriers went in. And so we took the time to speak to Newbie over at Kava or Paul Tully at Tequila Mockingbird. Um, and we spoke to, you know, we spoke to Gates, we spoke to uh, Farmer's Table. Uh, across the board, we found support for the idea of being able to ballet uh, and, uh, and free handicap because on Forest Street, there is only one handicap spot. Yeah, so I, I hate to interrupt. You can scroll down too, because there's. I think this information. This is like kind of a map of what we're going to be doing the locations. And honey, you're doing a great job. So yes, go. Hey, thank you. So just essentially, what we're what we're going to be seeking from the police commission and the uh, next Thursday, uh, and what we're proposing here is essentially triangulating in town um, to have a a space on at Spiga and to utilize the telephone lot. And we've spoken to Sue Kuda about that to park, have one on Elm Street and at the at the intersection of um, Elm and South and then having one on Forest Street. Um, and, you know, the conversations that we've had with the folks um, in town uh, pretty much agree that this would be a benefit. Um, we would really only be requesting permission to use the Park Street lot. And so if you want to go to the next slide, the, um, we'll let you know exactly how the service works. We do have the best technology in the parking and the Valley parking industry. Um, it's a technology that allows us to give physical tickets away, but it also allows us to very quickly move cars through the system. Um, it's called Net Park. And the technology allows us to literally take a phone number, check somebody in, they immediately get a text message with a digital ticket, um, and then they can check out from their table and we have their car waiting for them. The reasoning behind that is it makes it very simple and it makes it very easy. Um, and uh, the valet walks the car, makes sure it's protected. We take any pictures of the, of the damage, it all logs into our app. And the customer can tip and pay on their phone app and let us know when it's coming. We give them a, a estimated time of arrival and we let them know when the car's out front. So nobody has to wait in their car in the snow. They can walk outside. But moreover, it's touchless. And it's important to note, and I know that you have your scope of responsibility, but we're operating a COVID-19 safety protocol that's approved through the National Parking Association of which we're members. Um, and that includes being as touchless as possible, wearing masks, wearing gloves, putting steering wheel covers on each steering wheel before we drive it. So I wanted to let you know that essentially how to use it is you pull up, we take it from there, and we maintain a good traffic flow in town. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Uh, the business model is, is customer service based. Um, everything is about customer service uh, when it comes to this, this business model. And it's very important because, uh, you know, being from New Canaan um, and creating this company in New Canaan, we know what the New Canaanites deserve and what they, what, they, what they would love to have. And that is obviously for seniors and folks with limited mobility to have direct access to their places but it's also to be greeted with a smile. We're gonna be the first person that people see when they arrive and the last person. And so the goal is, is to always be there with an umbrella in the rain or to carry heavy packages. And so what we've also figured out is that in order to do this, we need to be fair. Um, and to, to make it work, every car will be parked at the same rate, um, no matter what location it's at and restaurants will be able to opt in to the program. That's gonna allow us to operate. Um, the profits, um, which are not gonna be many, um, are gonna go into improving the product. 
we are hiring the best of the best. And for the town of New Canaan, there would be no less. And so we have, we have partnered with Paycom, a uh, service that allows us to background check, motor vehicle history check, and drug test all of our employees before they come on board. Uh, and we, we believe that that is gonna be a very important uh, step in the process. Uh, and, and, and it's working out very well. So I'll close by the lay stands if you wanna go up one, that next slide. Uh, this one? No, I'm sorry, down one. I'm sorry, I apologize. Just is, um, here you go. So, then we're gonna go to the, uh, we're gonna go to the proposed valet stands. If you want me, if you want me, I can share my screen and make it easier for you, Keith. Which one do you want? Uh, we are gonna go to um, uh, one slide, two slides up. Up. This is up. There we go, right there. So again, I wanted you guys kind of to see what the game plan was. We uh, are speaking with the Roger Sherman Inn about doing all their private events. Um, and Nez and Joseph have been very kind to allow us to come out and test the system there. Um, the uh, Spiga would be uh, location one because it's the first on the drive-in. Again, probably not gonna be the most active location, but we feel that it's a good one. Uh, location two would be on Elm right there. And we know, again, there are going to be changes. And as we move forward and work with the police commission, we're going to hammer down exactly where that is, uh, where it's going to be best. Three would be Forest. And four, we're talking to the folks over at Cherry Street East about possibly doing special events. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Well, can I stay with this one? You said for number three, parking garage. Where's the parking garage? And okay, so so essentially on location three, we're discussing with Moran towing at 50 Locust. We're also spoken to speaking to Mike Lombardo over at 49 to 51 Locust um, as two possible locations for Forest Street. Uh, 50 Locust would be the best location. You'll see some pictures of it here because it's right at the end of the block, right? Mm -hmm. So we literally pick up the car, take it into the parking garage and then move it around. Um, there's been a, in, I, with restaurants, it's been difficult for us to actually finalize anything because we haven't been approved yet. And so a lot of the conversations we've had have been theoretical, you know? So if we are approved by the parking commission and if we are approved by the police commission, you know, would this be something you wanted to do? And the overriding sentiment has been yes. The same thing kind of goes with some of the parking lots it's kind of, let's wait and see. Um, you know, so Sukuda has been very kind to say that she'd be very interested in allowing us to use the telephone lot. The folks at 50 Locust and Moran Towing uh, have been very interested in offering us the parking garage. Um, you know, our insurance agency is over at 51 Locust, Rand Insurance uh, here in New Canaan. Uh, they've got a hundred spots over there. So there's a plenty of, of opportunities there on Forest Street. Um, we haven't really thought about using the Locust Street lot. Street lot does get busy, right? It feeds into Forest and also feeds onto Main. Then there's also a lot of pump, a lot of uh, New Canaan traffic equipment that is actually stored on that lot, and as well as some construction materials. So we're well aware of of the of that lot being a little bit crowded, um, and so we've been looking elsewhere. As far as, so that covers Spiga, which is the telephone lot in Forest. Our discussion for the Elm Street lot was, and, and if you wanna go down, we can get a little bit more in detail. This just kind of shows some people had asked us about how do you compare with you know, Uber or Lyft? And there's no comparison there. This is, this is basically talks about, uh, you know, are you gonna be driving people? And the answer is no. We're not a transportation service. We're literally just gonna be parking cars. Um, and so we're not gonna be driving people home. Um, we're just gonna be parking their cars for them and taking care of their vehicles. Um, and that's the difference between us and a, and a driving service. If you wanna jump to the next, the next slide, Keith, thank you. Um, this just gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the people we've spoken to. One of the first things we did again was speak to Barb um, over at staying put in New Canaan. 
and um, you know Nick really spent a lot of time with us and letting us know what was happening. What that did for us was it inspired us to join the National Parking um, and uh, the International Parking and Mobility Institute to do some research and to offer our people training on exactly what it means to help with mobility uh, and to have best practices in parking. And that, that's everything from accepting cars to the way that you handle a traffic flow to the way that parking is actually planned in communities uh, when changes are made. And at some point in time, I'd love to share some of that information because they've done a lot of studies on improving traffic flow and helping mobility. We also uh, became members of the National Parking Association. Again, the best in class, the organization to understand how to operate offers training to our people. It offers us the opportunity to, uh, to be certified in a number of different areas. It gives us access to research best in class. Um, we reached out to the Chamber of, uh, of Commerce, uh, the, the Chamber, and I spoke to uh, Laura um, in regards to what they thought about the idea. Um, and I like to start the community. I figured it out. That's great input there. You faded out, Billy. Okay, let me just, let me change my settings. How am I now? Fine. Uh, thank you, Keith. So, and then obviously we, we wanted to speak to the stakeholders in the restaurant business um, and had some great input from the folks at Spiga, uh, Tequila Mockingbird, Paul Tully was a huge asset and, um, and really helped guide us. And then the folks at Elm were very, very uh, positive. Um, Long story short, we ended up partnering with Armor Park, the best valet company insurance in the country. This is their specialty, not the best coverage to protect new Canaanites uh, and new Canaan. So if you want to jump to the next slide, I know you guys are busy. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, some of the equipment we're going to have along with our uniforms, these are actual the uniforms we're going to have. White shirts, I'm wearing one now with red jackets, black pants, black sneakers. Um, steering wheel covers, gear shift covers, black gloves. That's our mobile app. Beautiful brand new signage, beautiful brand new cones to protect uh, ourselves at the lots and mobile stands to, to come and go. Um, again, everything's brand new. Everything's best in class. Uh, next slide, please. important for you guys to know um, the, the, the coverage that we're getting. And so we have gotten the best in class coverage that is being used by municipalities all over the country um, to protect you. And then you would also be listed as one of our lots if we were, a, if we were given the opportunity to use some of the spaces in the Park Street lot. And just having conversations earlier in the process and doing our research on Friday and Saturday nights, parking spaces 56 through 96 on the back side of the Park Street lot really go unused. Uh, those last three rows are just not being used in the evening times. They're not being used during brunch either on Sundays. And so we felt that that was a very smart way to add to the mobility, to allow handicapped to park and give people some convenience with an easy run for our folks. And so um, but Rand uh, Insurance wrote the policy with Armor Park, um, and Armor Park does this for municipalities nationwide. We would obviously list the town of New Canaan as one of the insured. That would hold them hold you harmless while we're parking cars. Not only are we insured for the cars themselves, but for the people around the cars, the parking lots themselves, and the people driving the cars. And then uh, next next slide, please. Here's a little bit of a traffic plan that we put together for you guys, if you guys just wanna see. So this is kind of a, a look at the old Elm Street, how it used to be. Now it's changed with the barriers. Obviously we've lost a lot of parking. And then here's a picture of one of our valet stands right there at the juncture of South and Elm. Uh, right now, where people are using as a drop-off location anyway, and some people are just putting their blinkers on and running in, um, causing a little bit of an issue. We believe that having our service will allow for that. 
but we wanted to put that valet stand out there to show you kind of what it might look like. There's the folks coming here with the Ferrari. I'm really lucky. That front row parking spot. You're fading out again. Okay, let me adjust one more time. Thank you for telling me. How am I now? Good. Okay, thank you, Keith. So anyway, you can go to the next slide to give you a little bit of an idea of, of you know, the, the spaces at the lot. The, the cut through that we have right there next to the theater makes it easy for us to get there. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see is just in my time um, doing my research, I did catch someone that had, had dropped someone off and then they had to come back around and pick them up. And so offering the handicap, the ability to valet park their cars would allow for family members to stay together when they go into restaurants, not to drop their loved one off and then park over at the library and then come back. The ability for them would be to be able to pull up at no charge, park their car, walk in, and then we park their car for them. So this was just an opportunity I saw but that's really the location that we're hoping for. We feel that it, it would not impede traffic whatsoever. Uh, but we also know that there are changes being planned. Uh, you can go to the traffic plan there. Excuse me. So what you'll see here is where the pink is marked. That's where the stand would be. You'll see that there's a cut through for our, our runners. So we're not going to be really impeding traffic on the sidewalks either. We're literally going to cut right through. And that takes us back to those back spots, 56 through 96. Um, and then there's some, some spots on the back of that uh, lot as well that are used for, uh, that are used during the day for, uh, uh, for folks that use it for the train station. Uh, just kind of wanted to let you see how we're going to be driving in a big circle. The whole trip takes about two minutes. Um, so again, we're not going to have to staff with 10 people. We're going to be able to staff with three, four, or five and be able to maintain a good traffic flow. Here's the proposed Forest Street location. There's only one handicapped spot on Forest Street. You're probably well aware of it. It's in front of the park at park. Um, and that is a lot of times taken up by someone that's picking up food from the diner, you know, farmer's table, Kava gates. And so a lot of times it's just dumb luck if you get it. And if it is taken by someone who's, who is uh, legitimately handicapped, that means that 10 other people can't use it, right? Um, and from what we heard is that people actually don't go to Forest Street on Friday and Saturday nights to eat if they have a handicapped member. Or you can see here what they're doing is once again, is that they dropped a loved one off and then they had to go park their car. And this is somebody picking those people up once again. And they had their blinking lights on on forest with the new barriers. And we feel that this is one of the, the, the easiest decisions uh, of, of, the, of the bunch is that what we would do is move one spot ahead of that handicapped spot and be parking valet parking cars there out of traffic flow, but helping everybody on the town from from locale, uh, if you want a gelato, if you want to go to the diner, tequila, gates, cava, is that we're going to have the, the wherewithal to park right there at the end of the block. If you go to the next slide, you'll, you'll see that the traffic pattern is really simple here. You know, if everything works out, once we have approval, 50 locusts is the natural there to take the cars in the middle of the block. You park the cars in the parking garage. Again, we're talking to three different locations um, triangulated here about potential. And then we're literally going to come down Cherry Street, back up and around. It takes about three minutes. And so the goal is, is to take that one handicapped parking spot on Forest and miraculously turn it into 20, encouraging more people to park, uh, valet but also offering people the convenience. Um, and the one thing I don't have here is a traffic plan for, for, for Spiga, but the one good thing I did wanna let you know is that if someone was to valet park their car at Spiga, have dinner and then go listen to some music 
at Gates on a Saturday night. The good news is that they'll be able to actually request their car to be picked up, to be dropped off at Gates. And so you can actually, you know, have dinner at Spiga and then go up the hill and have your car dropped off there. That's part of it. Go to the next slide. Thanks so much for your help, Keith. I appreciate it. We also just wanted to let you know that we did the same thing for Roger Sherman. And also this is one of our best pictures of our valet stand is that it's small. Um, it does have a beautiful umbrella. It's mobile, and so we can put it wherever we want. But I, that's primarily why I wanted to show this was just to let you see how compact the stand is. Um, but we, we are uh, working with them on private parties. So you can go to the next slide, and we've kind of done this for everything because I know that you're handling the parking lots in town. But you know, we sent this to the police commission today for them to just review. Are going to be tra uh, crossing the street here. And we just did want them to know that we've got a plan uh, and how we're, we're making the traffic flow. And we're gonna communicate with the police commission on how to make that, make that work. Um, long story short, you know, as my wife said, my wife wanted to, uh, to kind of wrap up here. You know, we are very, very excited about the opportunities. We believe it brings value. We've brought the best of the best technology, hiring, um, uh, and I'll let Meredith kind of uh, to, to jump in here uh, with kind of some closing thoughts. And so just in closing, and thank you so much for looking and listening to our presentation. This is something we've both been working on for quite a while. But this was a way that we thought we could get both give back to the community and provide a service and have a lot of upside for the businesses involved, as well as the people that would be using the service. So I don't know if you have any specific questions, you know, we'll do our best to answer them. But uh, again, know that, you know, where this is coming from is from a true desire to be part of the community, help the community and to, to help small businesses. Okay, um, just so you know, and, I, and it sounds like you do, you know, our scope of responsibility and authority in the parking commission is the municipal parking lots. Yes, sir. And so, you know, any valet parking on the street, we don't have control over. Uh, I think you mentioned just the one lot, the, the park street lot that you would use in that in your one plan. Um, certainly, I agree with you that lot is uh, in the evenings, it's empty during the day. It's, it's well utilized. It is. Um, so uh, I don't know how, you know, what hours of operation you would plan to have. If it's just the evening, uh, you know, I wouldn't think we'd there'd be too much of a concern. And I guess some arrangement could be made. Uh, but if it's during the day, we have sold permits to all of those spots and, and double sold them. So um, I think that would be extremely problematic. Yeah, there's going to be no daytime valet. The only daytime valet that some people have asked us for is Sunday morning valet during brunch. Um, so other than that, there's really no purpose. Now, guess what? There has been requests for us to do valet during things like sidewalk sale um, or you know certain events. Um, and that's why I had a conversation with Rob Malazzi if there might be an opportunity to do some things there or to get creative and literally just park over um, at the old schoolhouse lot uh, back on the other side of the library. Um, uh, because the back side of that parking lot isn't really used very often, except for the driving school. And they love to use that parking lot. People back in those spots perfectly. But other than that, not it wouldn't be uh, a daytime thing. Friday, Saturday nights, and maybe Sunday. But no, we I've done the research and I think you're right. Um, and I, we just wanted to kind of stay out of the way and give some service back. Yeah, and again, if it's in municipal lot and it's in the evening where we're not uh, we're, we're not monitoring those lots, their spots, to me, those cars would have a right to park there anyhow, because they're new, you know, people going to new Canaan stores and restaurants and things. So I don't see any, any you know, in much of an issue from our side. Stacy, what are your thoughts? Um, like uh, 
we said to Billy before at night, there's never an issue. I agree with you that uh, people can park there at night. Uh, during the day, there is a problem. They do get filled up with uh, businesses, but at night, I don't see an issue. Okay. And you would you would cone off these spots, right? So at the beginning of the evening, you would come up with cones and put them in there. So no, so because you want to keep all your cars that you're working with in the same area, is that correct? That's exactly correct. And we've went ahead and purchased 200 highway cones um, that are best of the best. So they're 28 inches high, um, brand new one piece cones. So they're sturdy and we would drop them uh, you know, sometime around the 5.30 hour. Um, uh, again, only dropping cones where there are no cars parked. And then if a car is parked there, we'll avoid that obviously and allow them to pull out. We would cone the, uh, we would cone the spots around that because our goal to be efficient is to park them in lines, right? So, um, and, and again, we're only looking at those back three rows. The one up against the hedges um, would be the last because there are some commuters there. Um, and we would take 90, uh, uh, 56 through 96, which is the, the you know, those the back two rows out of the, and I've looked at it for 10 weeks straight and they're hundred percent empty, maybe one or two stragglers. Keith, can I jump in? Um, I did meet with Billy, with Laura and Stacy, and um, we went through a lot of this and it is an interesting concept. I think listening to it again tonight, one of the areas that I think we'll have to review is um, the town has never offered up, you know, pr their property for another, uh, another, the benefit of another business, right? So I think we would have to look, talk to our insurance company, and just check with them on what the liability is of this for us, um, because again, if another valet company comes in and now we've got two, and and how do you say no to one, yes to one, and no to the other, and that kind of thing? So that would be the only other thing that I would like to explore on our end. Happy to get you a copy of our of our insurance um, policy, yeah. uh, Tucker. So and I, and it's not so much the insurance, but thank you. I would I would take that. It's more. I just want to make sure that our our insurance carrier and, and the town is okay with us having you know another enterprise use our property. That's all. So yeah. I just want to. I you know you could skate that issue by seeing about the parking that's behind, like the People's Bank. Talk to the owner of that building. And yep. see, you know, a private. Well, it's privately private owned. I mean, you know, I don't know if she's willing, or else behind the on the other side of the street, behind the Bank of America, um, it's a little. Yeah. There, there's no walk through there, so that makes it more difficult. But yeah, so, um, yeah, so we have had conversations with Bank of America um, and with their leasing agent as well, uh, because that's you know they have a leasing agent, a locally based leasing agent. Uh, and so we have had conversations with him. Um, ironically, with all the COVID changes, they're having a hard time reaching the person that they need to talk to about, about that company, uh, <laughs> the lease. It's obviously yeah. a long-term lease, but he's still trying to find the person to talk to. We did have a conversation with the owner of the People's Bank lot. Um, you know, originally there was a, a little bit of a miscommunication. They have some problems with that lot and people parking in it. They actually have a security guard there to kind of ward off some people. Yeah. So does yeah. the Bank of America building. So again, it only goes to show you that there are some problems because people are begging to park there. And you know what? After we had a good conversation, she and I really got along great. And she thought it was a wonderful idea. She wanted me to come back and revisit with her about how it went um, and where we were going. Um, and so it's not out of the, we're not kind of, uh, we weren't making any plans for that, uh, but she definitely wanted to know. And again, with Sue Kuda, Again, that's a privately owned slash municipal lot, right? So she leases those spots or gives them uh, to the town for employees to park during the week. Uh, and it's because she loves the town of New Canaan as well, right? Um, and, but we've also, had to, we've also reached out to uh, uh, Brock uh, Sachs across the street over where uh, the, uh, the club sandwich is as a potential. So we've really kind of did our research and looked around. Um, uh, you know, our goal is to make it as easy for our customers and for their guests and for our, our employees uh, as well, right? Because it's an efficiency medium. So the park, the park street lot was just probably the most efficient option with the cut through, but absolutely, you know, Tucker, you got to do your due diligence. We completely support that. 
We want everyone's eyes open as we go into this. Because, you know, when I was spoken, uh, when I was speaking to Steve Carl, he had said to me that, you know, really, we've been wanting to do this for a couple of decades, Billy, mm -hmm. uh, that we've been trying to do it. He said he almost did it himself. And then he started digging in and looking into it. And you know what? It's a jigsaw puzzle that it's kind of tough to put together. You, start yeah. together you guys have certainly done all, you know, all your homework and, and then some. I think if it weren't for my husband and I both together, I don't see how the cogs, because it's so much... <laughs> Just the insurance, the how getting trained, background checks, how you need to, mm -hmm. it really is, there's a lot to it. That's okay. that's for sure. Yeah. The valet parking okay. insurance, folks, is the toughest insurance to get in the country, bar none. I mean, uh, you know, and we were told this by our insurance provider, and it, we really had to button it up and had to put, we put together a 35-page safety training manual for all of our folks. Uh, put together a regimen of training and 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 safety and and you know letting them know where we are and you know what they really believe in our concept and we have okay. invested in well the billy meredith i think we spent you know enough time i told you we you know we don't really have much authority on uh, you know on this uh of course i think we all support the concept terrific the question about parking in in the park street lot in the evening but while you know i i agree with Tucker, we, it's something we haven't done before. But on the other hand, we have town residents who park there all the time. And basically, these are town residents who be parking there just using the valet service. So, but you know, this, this is a profit making business. No, I, it is a for profit business. Uh, totally, yes, totally different from individuals. No, that's true. No, I agree with you. I agree with you, Peter. And thank you for bringing it up. Um, it is, it's not going to be a big profit making business. Um, there's not going to be a ton of profit. That's it's not the point. No, of course not. I totally agree with you. Um, there is a, there is a, a small service element to it that we are going to offer unlimited parking for free for every person that has a handicap or mobility in town. Um, and so that is the one aspect that is uh, kind of a, it's built in to our business plan that anybody and working with staying put in new Canaan. Um, we are going to get that out to everybody, every one of their members. Yeah, be careful, Billy. You might go bankrupt. Well, again, we're we're going to have the people out there anyway, so we're going to have the people parking cars anyway. The the restaurants are going to be, you know, are partnering with us to make it happen, and so we're excited about that. And the people who are able bodied are going to are going to have the benefit to to walk into their restaurant on their anniversary in the snow and not have to walk around the corner. Yeah, I could see that it would be a good demand. But look, we have to move on. Okay. Thank you very much. It's a very good presentation. One thing I'd suggest is number your slides. So when you go before the police commission, they can go, uh, when they ask questions, which they will, can we go back to slide three or slide five? Thank you very much, Keith. I appreciate the input. If I may ask, what our next step is um, in the process of, uh, of getting kind of your yay or nay uh, on oh. using the park lot? Uh, I think the police is really first because unless you get the approval to meet on the, uh, you know, to, to, to park on the streets and pick up your customers, it, you know, that is your, um, that's your threshold. You've got to get past that threshold because you have alternatives. The only municipal lot you're talking about is the park street lot. And um, you know, you, you know, there is the people's bank there, you know, there, there, there are some alternatives. So I would say just come back to us. It doesn't have to be formal with an email and, and let us know when you get the approval from the police commission. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank very you welcome. So let's get back then to our agenda. We have the um, in fact, I'd like to maybe cover this before we even do the uh, go back to the appeals. Um, Stacy, um, at the last meeting, you report on the number of people who signed up to renew parking permits. You mean the, the free parking, the is that what we're talking about? Well, for everything, there's the renew, 
to parking permits, the paid parking permits in the center lot. Right. Welcome's lot. And then, um, you know, and, and you made comments about how filled the center lot was and how the experimental, experimental free pro permit, <laughs> the experimental free permit program was going. And that, by the way, goes to a couple of the tickets I saw go by. Yeah. And then also, you know, how's it going with the people now for these commuter lots? So many people have signed up. So if you wouldn't mind kind of sharing what information you can on that, that would be great. Sure. So uh, as far as the free permits are going, uh, uh, that program is going uh, great. We're having people, employees come in every day signing up for it. Uh, the majority of people love the program and they hope uh, it stays. Uh, especially the hourly employees, but um, again, the employees are very happy with that program. Um, we are in renewing um, the commuter permits uh, where we have uh, a lot of people renewing. We have a lot of people taking the two-year priority um, So, So let, option. just to be more clear, when you're saying... Um, the two-year priority that's where they're saying i can't i don't want to make up my mind just i want to keep my space in the, the spot on the waiting list correct so um, what i'm calling it is they're deferring their renewal till they know a little bit better about what their employees their employers are moving forward with when they're coming back how many days a week and and things like that so that process is uh, moving forward as well. So everything seems to be going good. Um, well, so for the commuters, so, you know, for, uh, so say for the lumber yard, yep. where we would have hundreds of people who would have normally renewed, mm -hmm. about how many people have renewed now? We have 287 that have renewed. And I have about a hundred and nineteen, I believe, that uh, wanted to be put on the priority list. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I did not grab that sheet. I have to apologize because okay. it's okay. And I'm talking about the uh, the. And what about for like um, um, the Talmadge Hill lot? Are they getting yeah. any kind of, you know, renewals? Yes. Talmadge Hill, we got 162 renewals so far. We have probably, I think it was like 99 defers. We have a lot of new residents uh, that are taking Talmadge Hill as well. So they were just waiting for us to get the um, applications to uh, cover this year's time frame. And uh, so I'm signing up a lot of new residents as well. And That's great. Right. So that's there, going good. Richmond Hill, at least when I see it, it looks like it's still pretty empty, other than yeah. for the, the guys working uh, carp skies. Yeah, well, we, Richmond Hill, as we know, is a lot of people bypass that lot. Right now, we only have 25 uh, <clears throat> renewals, so um, and not many deferrals. Yeah. Uh, Okay. If I if I could jump in too, so Bob and Stacy and I have been meeting, gosh, at least weekly, if not multiple times a week, just following all of this. And one of the things that we're also going to add is um, we're going to have either Mike or Stacy or somebody on a, on a regular basis going through the lots and just eyeballing. Are they 50% full? Are they 25% full? Just so we can see any patterns that are going to start to emerge, especially over the next few months when people do start to go back. I mean, they have the license plate reader, they have all the data, but I think it's going to be nice to know at different times of day, you know, things change. By nine o'clock in the morning, most of the commuters, commuters are, are in their spots. So we'll want to see that. And then, you know, certainly the Richmond Hill lot is one that, that, um, you know, is prime for doing something more with being that there's so much available parking there. Yeah, I have a question uh, and I'm going to plead ignorance here. So what's going on with the waiting list, like in the lumber yard? Because again, I, I think per what uh, Tucker just said, from what I gather, it is very empty these days. And yet you've got hundreds of people on a list. So um, again, if you could review like is that list going to be moving? Is that going to be purged? What's going on? So basically, we have to be very careful on moving down on the wait list 
because of the people that are deferring their permit renewal. They are doing that because we're offering them the option that whenever they need to, they can be reinstated at any time back into that lot. So we have to keep those spaces somewhat available. So moving down on the wait list has to be kind of a careful procedure where you can't just say, okay, the, the lot is empty now, um, but who knows what's gonna happen in a few months down the line. So right. as far just, as- just, If I could just interject, I mean, so what is, define a deferral for me, please. Like what, what does that enable somebody to do? To say, I paid for my- No, they're not paying, they're asking, to not renew until they know a little bit more what their employer wants them to do. That's what the town is offering. But these, so, these are people who are not on the list. They're current permit, permit holders, holders, right? Correct, yes. Okay. This is a new Good. policy, Drew, that we put to, in place this year to accommodate okay. a lot of the flux that was happening with, with COVID. And, um, right. and, and it's worked well. I think Bob's got his hand up too. He might have something to add on that. I, I think this might clarify it, is that our base was 1,268 right. uh, previous annual permit holders. And that's the base we contacted. And we asked them three things. Do you want to renew? Renew. Uh, would you like to stay on this priority list? Which means that if your employer calls you back over the next two years, you will have a priority. You can definitely get a pass. So we can't oversell the lot because uh, companies are really changing their mind based on the news and what's going on frequently. And then we actually asked people, do you want to be off the list? You don't need your pass anymore. And we, have, we had like 69 or something do away with their pass altogether. Well, we had... Uh, yeah. 40, we had 40 people 44. as of Monday. Stacy has more current more, information. Yeah, I have updated numbers for Bob. But, but the good news is that of that 100% pool of the 1268, 60% of the people have responded to one oh, of the man. three options. And we've been going up about 50 passes a week. Right. So the real concentration is is getting through this list. You can't really dwindle down that other list yet. Uh, until but the other the other um, sort of challenge that we're having is, while people are being called back to work here and there these days, people aren't being yet. People aren't being called back yeah. five days a week. Five so we're right. we're going to start seeing you know yeah. maybe Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays being the light days or the heavy days. We're not sure. I mean, I, I'm hearing. It's, it's runs the gamut. Some Bob was telling me today, his daughter's firm wants everybody back one day a week. And then the rest of the day is whatever your team's doing. So there's, yeah. gonna be, I mean, this is going to be the new normal. No question. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to have to sort of go, go with it along, along the way and figure out what, when, what are the pressure times and what are the other days that we can't offer yeah. um, the space. Some other options. Right. Yeah. So can I ask <laughs> Robert, you said you gave the number 1268. Was that, were you saying that was the number of permits for the lumber yard? No. no that well, was, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, wasn't that, Bob, the, the number of 2019 permits that were out, correct? We're out for the three lots. Richmond oh, Hill, right. Talmadge right. Hill, and Lumber yeah. Yard. Okay, because I was wondering how you were getting there to your 68%. Yeah, that, that's guess. that's the chart we're, we're putting yeah. together. We're and and our, our opinion is that this is a month of... In, of change with a lot of the people, probably October 1st, we'll, we'll have a little better handle where we're headed here. I, I, I have a feeling that's not gonna happen. It's January now. I mean, yeah. uh, some of the major yeah. companies yeah. are just, they're just putting the date further out until right. and then, we get through the holiday. No, yeah. you're correct. It's under control. So, so what so are we my, doing? My, my, so, sorry, one last question. So the deferral last, it was two years that somebody mentioned? Yes, it, it go. Yes, okay. anytime between uh, September first and August thirty first of twenty twenty three. Wow. Okay, that that that's a heck of a long time. I mean, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, finances and moving on. You know, another six months of this, we might want to say, you know what, 
we're never going back to the way it was and we got to move on here because there, there there could be lots of other people who are willing to park there that can't because of these lists and, we're, and, and so, there might be but we the thing is right now we don't know so we have to kind of but well, we're not saying monitor. Are, there, are we saying no to anybody at this point as I mean, far as so let's say right? someone they want to park in the lumber yard um, which is sitting there empty. Uh, so are we saying no to them? Or are we offering them Richmond Hill? Or what are we doing? We're doing what we we basically are normally doing. I mean, with new permit holders, we're giving them Talma Chill because there's no wait and telling them that they can go on the wait list for Richmond Hill and the lumber yard. Uh, I know definitely we can move down 19 people because 19 people in the lumber yard have not renewed. So they gave up their permit. So that's a guarantee we can go down 19 people. Uh, we've always been able to go down a little bit more. I haven't gotten to that point just yet because we're still receiving people renewing. But once it steadies itself, then we will start looking at the wait list. And once I start seeing how the lots yeah, are going. Being, the Richmond Hill is empty. You could offer bunches of spaces there. There's you know, the lumber yard is getting some usage. So I guess you have to be a little more careful. And, uh, Hill is empty. and this is also an opportunity for us to experiment with things. I mean, the, the business permits were an experiment that seems to be working quite well. So, you know, we've been throwing around some other ideas of, of uh, some temporary experiments that we want to try that might alleviate some of the pressure. So we'll, you'll probably hear more from us on that down the road. Keep in How mind much we drop the, we drop, I'm, I'm sorry, Laura. Oh, we how much them. longer? How much longer are we going to wait for the forty percent? I mean, the deadline was what September first, right? But we only yeah. went out. We only went out three weeks earlier than that. <laughs> so it's the and August was a month of people moving around and decisions being made. We we had a discussion at three thirty this afternoon. One of the many discussions about some of the flexibilities or different needs of people today for their parking permits. Uh, I mean, you could start saying people maybe need one, need a parking permit for two days a week or three days a week, but you can't, you can't take the chance of thinking people will be using of various five days and they all show up on Monday. But I see another survey in our future too. Yeah. I mean, we got some yeah, response to that, to the survey that we did the last right. time. Well, you yeah, guys, let's, let's do it by surveys. day. I mean, you guys love surveys. I'm, and I, I, I think, yeah, I think you could take the chance that everybody shows up on Monday. We, we've been taking the chance for years when we were tripper selling the lumberyard lot that people would show up on yeah. on a Monday, and they never did. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to me, if you've got a bunch of empty spots sitting there, mm -hmm. and you've got residents who are saying, "I'd like to park there," mm -hmm. I think we need to, you know, just start letting them have the permits. Uh, in some fashion, even if it's the, we notify them in some ways, it's tentative, you know, um, it, you know, as we go through COVID. Mm -hmm. But we're certainly offering them the Richmond Hill lot. Uh, but I think it's kind of a crime if you've got people who want to be taking the train. And I don't think there's that many, by the way. I don't mean to overstate this case. But if there are people who want to be either parking in, in uh, the lumber yard. Um, and they're willing to pay for the privilege, uh, and we have empty spots galore. Uh, I just think we we've yeah. got to we've got to find a way to deal with that. Yeah, and you keep in mind also that that mid up until about mid August, um, a lot of commuters, a lot of people going into the city, were moving to Neroten Heights right. and Darien oh, because right. of the train situation. Sure. Yeah. Our right. trains have only just been back in two for two weeks. Yeah, and that needed. And some people didn't even know about through. that. Yeah, right. and I agree. We need to let let, let more just time go. Yeah, yeah. But but I mean, I could just see, and I mean, I may not be in the commission at the time, but when you get into early next year, that, that you'll need to revisit this hard. Right. Oh, yes. I, I think so too, and and I think that we might even see that prior to that, but I think we have to let it go a little bit longer now because things are constantly changing on a daily basis Me. so okay how many are on the wait list stacy just uh, for, uh for... 404 for the lumberyard 
Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. But again, you never know how how good that is when you start calling them. Will they really? Right. Right, and that's After another those reason. those people. The next. Um, yeah. Is, is can I ask this, a dumb question? Is there a possibility that we could take twenty five um, parking spots and put a pay for the day kind of? <laughs> App we time. talked about that today. We, we actually just yeah. talked about that today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, we because, used to do that. It's so we used flexible. To have that. We used to have that in the lumber yard, and then I think we moved it over to Richmond Hill. Yeah. And pe people but, are very comfortable with the box car. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Box car, that, which that, is six bucks. Shoes. But we're looking at this. I mean, we had a week ago. We had what fifty-five new permits. We had ninety-five, I think, the week before this week yeah, yeah. so we're, we're getting some we're, we're tracking the revenue that's uh, uh yeah well, the re revenue is another thing you know I, just with these numbers when you're down from 1268 to uh, at least as i count three four fifty maybe five hundred mm -hmm. um I think we got 775 responses. Yeah, if I counted it correctly. No, but I'm counting the number of permit renewals. Well, on the okay. priority list, you have to yeah. count them. I'm as counting well. your 287, your 162, and I think you said 25. Right. And if you put that together, that's like 450, 460. You know, even if you round to 500, that that's a sense. huge decrease in your revenue. Right. Yeah. We're eight, you know, we're comparing this to the previous annual total permits sold. Yeah. We're at eight eight twelve behind that, but remember, we've been yeah. out selling for three weeks. Mm -hmm. I know, but uh, I think yeah. we I think we all agree it's unlikely we'll get back to anything near what we used to. Yep. So, so yeah. on on that point, I mean, I think for a later discussion is I think given the new normal, we retool the permit structure that it is you know you select the days you want to park. And if it's more than three, you get a package deal the for the problem week. Problem is, our software doesn't allow two. us to <laughs> a tag a certain license plate with you know Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Well, um, we're going to have to do something about that. Right, exactly. And yeah. that was and, the same discussion all, we had today. Yeah, it's 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 all a matter of looking at this differently and trying to experiment and trying to. Um, you know, come up with good ideas, new ideas, because everything has changed. It's not the way it used to be. And, um, you know, get creative is what I've been using. And yeah. I think we can. And again, some of it is you just oversell. And even if everyone says uh, they want to park on Monday, many of them will be traveling and, you know. But uh, that'll we'll leave that for a future meeting. Yeah. Let's get back to other things on our agenda. Um, so I'm pulling up the agenda here. So we did new matters. We did mailing. Well, we haven't covered mailing of the wait list renewal forms. Or I guess really we did. Well, <laughs> not well. Do well, tell us about what, it then. Uh, so normally uh, we uh, mail out the renewal forms to remain on the wait list in November. I just want to know if you want me to continue to do that. That will also weed out people who don't want to stay on the wait list anymore because they might not be commuting. So that might uh, bring down the wait list as well. That's always the way we um, kind of get people off of the wait list. So I just want to know if you would like me to go ahead with that. I would say yes. But okay. Yeah. Okay. I would say yes. All right. So shall I make a motion that we continue to um, send the wait list renewal forms out in November as we have in prior years? And uh, all in favor? Aye. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Stacy, yeah. can we ask how many days a week they they would like to use the lot? Uh, to get sure some... we can. Uh, yeah, we can add anything you want to those. Right. Um, uh, we can redesign them. You know, with a couple of questions, if you'd like as well. So I, sure. I, I would put hurt. a Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday option. You know, and then and, and see. And, Tick tick the boxes. Yeah. 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 Well, like which days are you most likely to park? Right. Yep. And how yeah. many days? Yep. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one, which is just a note that we're actually having through trains again. Yahoo. Yep. 
Okay. However, I will mention that the afternoon ones have a lot of grumbling because the last through train is quite early. I think it's at four thirty or yeah, something. Really? So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Four yeah, thirty. It's not the end of the day. Yeah. No. <clears throat> it's still not what what it was. Uh, okay, so I think we covered on old matters. The update on people who've signed up to renew parking permits. Um, the electric vehicle charging stations update. Actually, I'm hoping that either Laura or Tucker can can uh, offer anything. All I've heard is we made our recommendations and Tiger is proceeding. Have you heard anything beyond that, Laura? No, no. Uh, I know Leo's continuing to talk to, to a, a bunch of different providers, um, but I think I believe, Tucker, correct me if I'm wrong, that the selectmen approved that we could add the second charger at the Morse Court lot. I think she stepped away. But I okay. think, they, I'm sure they did. I think I was at that meeting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I haven't heard what the progress is on that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I thought it was the second charger in the Morse Court lot and the one at the, on the- Behind Town Hall. Behind town yeah. hall, right on the old teen center. I thought that was. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I saw Tiger Man this morning. I didn't, I forgot to ask him. All right. Um, uh, again, if Tucker were here, I, or may, maybe you've heard they had another survey, which was on train service, not directly a parking survey. Um, what were the results of that? I guess we don't have it. Well, if Tucker comes back, we'll ask her. Um, and there had been an idea for Boxcar to institute bus service between New Haven and Manhattan. I'm suspecting that now that they've Metro North has reinstituted through trains, that that has made this idea passe. Because uh, I haven't heard anything new from Boxcar. Have you, Robert? No. Okay. You, no, I haven't no. heard anything. <laughs> yeah. Any updates? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I think we have to circle back to the appeals. Okay, we had uh, two appeals that ap appeared in person. I think we owe it to them because I think they still may be hanging on to cover them. Uh, the first one was Lucia Pinho uh, regarding an unpaid space. Um, any discussion on that one? Thank you. <laughs> No, no discussion. It's pretty cut and dry. Yep. Yeah, it wasn't. It was really... the one where he showed up late and he didn't have any money. Yeah. Not much of a. I, a, I thought a, that was a, pretty dry. Pretty yeah. Cut and dry. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So all in favor of upholding that. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second so I can see you all in favor of upholding. Okay, unanimous. Okay. And then there was the Carolyn uh, Wheeler, which kind of similar that uh, wasn't much of a defense. Any comments on that one? Um, no, the, my only comment would be, you know, I've been in those situations before. It's he said, she said, and uh, the fact that we don't have kind of a number on which to log an issue is a bit of a bummer. From, from the consumer side. Yeah, but you know, um, just so when when these machines were new, you know, had just been installed, we we provided a lot of grace periods, grace weeks. We let a lot of people off. Uh, those machines have been around for a while now. I think they're pretty bulletproof. I mean, in, in, you know, I, I guess the first time you use it, it may not occur to you that when you hit it, first thing you got to do is put in the parking space number you want, you know? And then how oh, much time, okay. and then and then you pay. Um, um, right. I, I get maybe I'm confused. I thought this was the young lady who had a credit card issue, or was this the woman? She did. Who, yeah. Okay. That's correct. But the I, fact. But that anyway, were, I, I get your. But it kept saying, like she yeah. said, it was forbidden. So maybe she had a bad credit card. It wasn't reading the credit card right, or she's putting it wrong. But. You know, I don't know. Do we accept that as a defense? You know, um, well, any the evidence comment? says otherwise. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll, I'll put it the other way. 
How many would vote to void that ticket? Okay, how many would vote to uphold that ticket? All right, I'm seeing unanimous. Sorry, Ms. Whelan. All right, um, I looked through the all of the other tickets. I'm sure you all did. Um, the one thing I would say, there's a there are at least two cases where people working downtown who could have had free parking, you know, could have just filled in the form, had free parking, are complaining that, oh, I parked and I had a customer and I couldn't get off and move my car. And to me, that's like a slap on the face. It's like, we don't want you moving your car. You know, we've provided a free parking for you that's a block away, maybe two, but they're small blocks, you know. So I myself have very little patience for that argument any longer. Um, but there were some other appeals. Were there any other appeals that anyone wanted to talk about? Yeah, Keith, um, what has been our historical uh, perspective on grace periods? We had one ticket that you know yeah. is documented that was two minutes over. Don't right. we traditionally give about five minutes? No, uh, historically there's been zero grace period. If you want a grace period, put it in another quarter. And then you can get your 12 minutes okay. or 15 minutes. Keith, the, as oh, I understand it, oh, the meters sorry. are set up so they already have a five minute grace period. So this guy was arguing about seven minutes. Is no, that not correct, the, Stacey? No. There is a little. Well, Peter is correct. There. It will start counting down and it will give extra time before it times out, actually, and gives us a red that the space is not paid for. Now, we don't know how much time a space, somebody's space is unpaid for. We don't know whether it's a minute, we don't know whether it's 30 minutes. So all, all right. we know right. is when we pull up on our screen, it's either green or red. So if our space is red, it's been yeah. unpaid for. Some people yeah. get caught for a few minutes and some people get 15 extra minutes, depending on how the officer's rotation in the lot goes. Yeah. So. Yeah. But you, you can't, I mean, if you start giving grace periods, then, gee, say you get five minutes and then someone's six minutes, you know, and if you slippery make it, slope. Minutes, then it's 11 minutes, yeah. you know, okay. uh, it's a slippery slope. In my view, it, the parking is cheap in New Canaan. It's easy to put in another quarter if you're paying with your credit card. Give yourself we another have half hour. Now. We have pay yeah. by phone, so they don't even have to run out to the machines anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's what I didn't understand. One of those employee stories, he he, he said he paid by the app. Why didn't he just renew by the app? But, so but again, busy. any of those employees can be parking in the, for free, which I really know. bothers me, you know. Yeah, but do they know that? I mean, are we going to punish the folks who just Is that our responsibility, don't Drew? Well, but they well, should be. Well, it is. Do they know that they can park I mean, for free? It's well, we chamber, chamber of Commerce is on this call. I mean, yeah. what do we want no, to do? We, so yep. uh, we have a very extensive uh, email list. Multiple times, you know, I send to it's the manager or the owner uh, to say, "Tell your employees it's free." And they have. Know. Yeah. And, and I mean, how many have we given out? Um, center. Center, we've given out 252 and Locust 235. Yeah. Wow. The message has gone out. And by the way, Stacy, maybe on, on those two, or maybe you ought to have a sentence on every one of these tickets that we inform, you know, just a reminder, downtown employees, you know, right. you know, may obtain or, a free parking permit for the center lot. Well, a little I will flyer tell you that, that could... one of the, the employees, the number seven. He actually has parking from his own business. He doesn't even need yeah. a permit for the town. He yeah. just didn't park in his own business because uh, yeah. he was running late. Yeah. Running late. Right. Yeah, and, and running late is not a defense. You yeah, know? And then he couldn't move it. So. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so my question was, were there any, any tickets anyone wanted to discuss? Otherwise, I would move. And we consider them and bank and just vote to uphold or void all of them. 
So not hearing anything, I make the motion that we uh, all in favor of upholding all of the remaining appeals. Okay, yeah. I keep looking for a good appeal that's juicy for us to have a discussion, but uh, uh, I didn't. No, I just don't want to run into John Barker anytime soon. That's all. Ah. <laughs> well, if you want to, let's look at his ticket. I'm happy to pull that one up. That's, no, it's that's like, the, it's two like the 60, you know, the 90, 90 second one. But like uh, what Stacy said is if it's red, it's red. I mean, yeah. It, it, we can't really start splitting hairs about it. But he, you know, he owns a business and, and he probably um, employs a lot of people. And I, my initial uh, res response was, let's give him a break, but th the machines I, I, do what they're supposed to do. I, I and, think people are shocked how quickly they work, right? Or how yeah. quickly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I think the, the red is red thing is, uh, help me make up my mind about that. Yeah. Um. I, I, I don't know. To me, if you want more time, just put it in another quarter in the meter. It's just not that hard. Yeah. Um, you know. Okay. Okay. So let's get back to our, I think we're nearing the end. Sorry, I'm closing my barker here. All right. So now we have done the appeals. We've approved the minutes. We've covered every new matter. We've covered every old matter. So we're on to input from the parking department. I think we've covered everything. Okay. Then let me just mention our next meeting is Thursday, November the 4th. Um, at that meeting, we will um, cover the recommendations that we make each year to PNZ and the Board of Selectmen it's formally for the acquisition of land for parking, but it's also our chance to kind of, uh, you know, put our oar in the water on various issues. And obviously commuter parking is one we might talk about. In the past, we've put in things for like uh, electric vehicle charging stations, but now anything we put in there about that is probably uh, passe now because we've had some success. I will try to remember to send around last year's recommendations so you, the new members can have a look and, and just be thinking about what recommendations you would want to make if you were running the town of New Canaan and we're thinking about the parking situation, what could we do to improve it? So that'll be our, that's our, our big item at the next meeting. There's, there's nothing major. And I guess, before we close, it's only nine o'clock. What, what were your people's thoughts? I see we still have, I think Meredith is still on. What were the, the sense of people regarding the valet proposal? Well, listen, um, I think it's a, it's a great concept and they've done a lot of homework and obviously uh, Mr. McLeod has great experience. Uh, I think there's some serious logistical issues, but that's for the police commission to hash out. Yeah, and I would just echo what Tucker said uh, to put a finer point on it and what Peter was saying earlier, going ostensibly into business with a business is a bit of a legal issue. It's an ethical yeah. issue as well. Yeah. So I think, I think we should run that trap once they if the police commission approves uh, to make sure we can't yeah. cross well, that's it right. I totally agree, Drew. I, that's why I was trying to push them towards coming to some arrangement with the lady who has the, uh, the, the People's Bank parking lot, which sits there empty and is actually pretty centrally located. It's pretty, Luck. yeah, I know yeah. she's a difficult bird, but um, that is still a very well-located lot. Um, and the lot is empty. You know, it, it, the guard is just there during the day, especially when the bank is open. Um, the lot is empty. She, there used to be a gate where they would close it off yes. at night. Yeah. So, so she um, has she's historically been horrific to other shopkeepers oh yeah. about her parking lot. I mean, she came out with a shotgun one day years ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
So real, real quick, just to, uh, for practicalities, I mean, to, to get across any legal uh, hurdles, uh, I mean, could we charge uh, a certain amount to this valet company? I mean, absolutely. And we're just like boxcar, right? I mean, or whatever. Yeah. We do with them. Yeah, we could. The boxcar the... isn't on town property. Oh, oh yes. It's at Talmadge it's Hill. Hill I guess. No. Yeah. We could make yeah. an arrangement similar to Talmadge Hill. Mm -hmm. um, so in a sense, we have, you know, we're, Again, the people actually using the spots, I think of it as the individuals that are parking, you know, it's their cars. Right. People maybe going to Soleil or something, and there's no parking on Elm, so they pay these people to valet park. So it, it's not like these are uh, incremental cars in New Canaan, and it's probably all, probably 80% New Canaan residents. Right. I like, I like the idea, and I, I hope these people can make money. And I think it's. I do too. That's Jen. I, I think you put your finger on. It. That's going to be a tough one. I hope they can make money. Yeah. Yep. By the way, I see Laura Dees. You've been on the call the whole time. Is there something you wanted to say? No, there's nothing I want to say. I just find it very interesting. That's all. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> there'll be a spot in the parking commission in a month or two. So maybe you want to uh, talk about coming on. Well, I definitely would have let that second ticket go. <laughs> oh, okay. Only because I, I have had trouble with the, um, the machines at times and actually called the parking commission or parking department while I was there and said, this machine is not working. And they said, okay, don't worry about it. And I didn't get a ticket, but I was stressed out the whole time. So I do think there are times those machines don't work. And yeah, but you yeah. know what? But Stacy had <laughs> Stacy had records saying that that particular machine was working all day. So that's what changed my mind about that particular ticket. Right. I don't know. I also had ticket problems at the machine behind the playhouse. So I, I just, you know, I, I just kind of feel like, you know, having been a person that experienced these things that, you know, and I didn't get a ticket, but I, I just realized how stressful it can be. And who has time to be calling the parking department when you have right. to get an appointment? It's like, you're not there to solve world hunger. You're just there to park. So anyway, yeah. you know, I really don't have any say in this, but I just find it all interesting. So thanks for asking. <laughs> okay. Well, unless there's some other comments, I will uh, move we adjourn. Do I have a second? I see Laura seconding, all in favor? All right, Hi. it is uh, 9.08, thank you very much. And uh, I'll get the draft minutes out uh, for your review, Jen, and everybody else. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Thank Keith. You, Keith. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody. Good evening. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.